Ireland has been grappling with a housing shortage that has pushed up prices to unaffordable levels for many renters and would-be buyers. This has been compounded by a rise in people applying for asylum and seeking shelter from the war in Ukraine. Subsequently, tents pitched on city streets are an increasingly common sight, and there have been anti-immigration protests too. The Irish government has announced plans to solve the crisis, but how do homeless people cope day to day? Bob Howard has been to a cafe in Dublin trying to make life on the streets a little easier. At first glance, the Lighthouse Café could easily be confused with any number of places to eat and have a hot drink scattered around Dublin. It's toasty inside. The walls are painted a trendy lime green. There's upbeat music playing. But unlike most of the city's cafes, the Lighthouse isn't open during the day. Instead, it unlocks its doors at 7pm, seven days a week. That's because the Lighthouse caters for the city's homeless. Traditionally, that's meant people born in Ireland, but increasingly they're also serving refugees and newly arrived migrants. On a freezing Monday night, I met Joseph from Zimbabwe, who'd just finished his evening dinner at the lighthouse, which serves leftover food from other shops and restaurants. Joseph had only been in Dublin for a few days, but he was already facing up to some harsh realities. The city was going through a cold snap, with night temperatures below zero. He was well wrapped up in jumpers and a padded coat, but his home for the night would be a tent pitched in the city centre. While women and families are given priority for emergency housing, single men like Joseph have to sleep wherever they can. Joseph told me they feel vulnerable, that anything could happen to him at night in a strange city. He said back in Zimbabwe, he was a landscape gardener by trade something he would like to continue in Ireland. He says he faces persecution back home for his political views. Helping to look after hundreds of people like Joseph is Aubrey McCarthy, the voluntary chair of Tiglin, an Irish NGO which runs the lighthouse. He says they used to feed between 20 to 40 people a night, but a combination of Ireland's housing crisis, the high cost of living and the arrival of greater numbers of economic migrants and people seeking asylum means they're now feeding around 500. Aubrey is a charismatic and evidently much-loved character around the cafe. He's a tall, well-built man, constantly laughing and joking with the other volunteers. To us, he says, it may just be a hot meal, but to them, it's everything. Aubrey tells me migrants and homeless locals mingle easily in the lighthouse. He's proud of the recently introduced bingo games, in which people from Eritrea, Zimbabwe, Cork and Galway sit together, calling out the numbers. He says the prizes are largely irrelevant. It's feeling part of a community that matters. But not everybody is happy about the growing number of people arriving in Ireland. The next day, I visited the Shipwright pub in the Ring's End part of the city, close to the docks. The disused pub had been earmarked as accommodation for homeless Irish families. It was burnt down on New Year's Eve, under the mistaken impression it was being converted to house asylum seekers. Police say it was arson. There are ongoing protests outside other accommodation sites due to take international protection applicants, as refugees are called here. The number is four times what it was pre-COVID, and since then, around 100,000 Ukrainians have also been granted temporary protection. I meet Michael Collins, who represents Cork South West as an independent in the Irish Parliament, and has just launched his own party called Independent Ireland. He believes the country has allowed in too many refugees, saying it's putting a strain on local services and the government should introduce a cap. Government ministers say they have obligations under EU and international law to offer protection. Back at the lighthouse, Joseph says he doesn't want to be a burden on Ireland and tells me he would be happy to volunteer his time to give something back to society while his asylum claim is assessed. Although he says he's due some cash help from the state, he doesn't know if he will be found accommodation. At least every evening, the lighthouse will be there to offer him food, companionship and a glimpse of the better life he's seeking.